So the next application of the derivative that we want to look at is what's called differentials. Um, so we'll, we'll lead into this slowly, uh, but we start over here with what should be, by now, a fairly familiar picture. We've got the graph of some function, y equals f of x, and we've got a tangent line to the graph, right? And we know how to write down the equation of a tangent line at this point, right? So we know that the tangent line looks like the following. y equals f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c, right? That's the equation for the tangent line. All right, and one of the th things we know about the tangent line is that when we're near x equals c, the tangent line gives us a very good approximation to the original graph, in the sense that for a given x value, there's not a big difference between the y value on the tangent line and the y value on the original curve. Okay? All right, that's good. And the other thing that we do is we say, well, okay, so what that means, right, the fact that those values are close together means this gives you this good linear approximation. And, of course, the right-hand side of this equation is a function. So we might call it L of x, okay? So this will be the linear approximation. And if we wanted to maybe be a little bit more detailed, we might say it's the linear approximation to the function f at the point c, right? Um, because clearly the linear approximation depends on both the function and the point at which you're approximating. All right. So linear approximations are something that are used frequently throughout mathematics and science because linear functions are easy, right? They're easy to calculate, they're easy to program, um, they require very little computational power to process and deal with, right? So if we can use a linear function, we're happy because linear functions are easy, right? Um, more complicated functions, even things like trig functions, these are harder to compute, right? We can't write down values off the top of our head for, for a trig function or an exponential function, right? Um, the best we can do is probably put things into a calculator. Maybe there are certain values that we've memorized, but in general, we don't know how to compute these, right? Not by hand. Um, linear functions we can compute by hand, right? Even, even if some of the numbers are a little bit ugly, right? Even you got decimals, fractions, things in there. With a pocket calculator, you can still work out the value. Okay. So we like to have these linear approximations. We like to have these tangent lines, right? And what we're going to look at now is, is using this tangent line approximation to model the change in a function, right? Um, so the idea is that we're going to look at a point x, which is close to a point c. And what you want to have in mind here is that x minus c, right, is some amount delta x, right? Or another way to say it is that x could be written as c plus delta x. And we want to think of this delta x here as some small quantity, right? We don't want to move too far away from the original point. Okay? So that's the setup. And we're frequently trying to ask this, right? In, in some sense, derivatives are, are designed to answer this question of, you know, if you make a small change in x, what's the corresponding change in y, right? That's, that's sort of what we're, we're doing when we look at derivatives. Okay, so what can we see from the picture, right? Um, you'll notice a couple of new symbols here, dx, dy. These are the differentials. These are going to come up as we, as we proceed through the videos. But we have our delta x, we have our delta y. And one of the things that you'll notice is that for a small change in x, you have a corresponding small change in y, right? But even smaller is the difference between the value on the original curve and the value on the tangent line. There's this tiny difference there, right? It's a very tiny difference. Um, this is what we're interested in, right? What we're interested in is using 
the linear approximation using the tangent line to approximate not just the original function, but the change in the function, right? And so what we can see from the tangent line is that this delta y, right, it's approximately, well, what is it? It's approximately the value of the line right, at x and the line at c. We could write it like that. Okay. Um, but maybe we can clean this up a little bit, right? So what is that? What's L of x? So L of x, it's here. It's f of c plus f prime of x times x minus c. And, well, let's write delta x for x minus c, right? We've introduced this notation. We might as well do it. Um, minus L at c. But what do we get when we put in x equals c? This disappears. We just get f of c, right? I mean, that's the point. Um, the linear approximation and the function are exactly equal at c, and they start to diverge slightly as we move away. Well, those cancel, right? And so what we get for our approximation is we get this, ah, sorry, not x here, but c. We get f prime of c times delta x, okay? This, uh, this quantity here, this is what's known as the differential, dy, okay? So dy, the differential, it measures the linear change in your function when you move from the original point C to some nearby point X, right? It's not the actual change, it's the linear change, right? It's sort of the linear part of the change. It's what you get if you move along the tangent line instead of along the original curve. And for most reasonably well-behaved functions, as long as delta X is not too big, this approximation should be good. And we'll use this approximation because in a lot of examples, this is going to be much easier to compute than this. Okay? And we'll look at that um, in some of the upcoming examples.